Hey, what's up? Sammy here. And today I want to talk to you about the Huawei Mate 60 Pro. I've been using it extensively for over a week now. As you may have seen, I already posted some camera comparisons featuring uh, this device. In this video, I will be consolidating all my thoughts and experience, making it the most comprehensive review on YouTube thus far. I want to emphasize that no one has paid me to create this review video, so you can trust that this video is completely honest and unbiased. I've dedicated several days without proper sleep or meals uh, to bring you this review. So if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel. Your support means a lot. When it comes to design, as soon as you take this phone out, it's bound to become the center of attention. Thanks to all the hype surrounding it right now, this phone is quite a challenge to acquire in China at the moment. Speaking of which, I want to give a special shout out to my friends over at GuestTop for lending me this phone for several days. If you are interested in getting the latest phones from China, you can always trust GuestTop. The link is in the description. Do check it out. Not moving beyond the hype, the Mate 60 Pro stands out in crowd due to its unique design elements. The distinctive ring camera module, the two-tone finish on the back, and the three dots on the front all contribute to its high recognition factor. The color choices take inspiration from nature and exude a fresh and elegant aesthetic, offering a subtle touch of luxury. On the other hand, the Mate 60 Pro Plus draws its inspiration from Chinese traditional calligraphy, boasting a unique Chinese aesthetic. So they are settled with that, with the Mate 60 Pro, the weight of 225 grams is well distributed across the phone. The 6.8 inch giant screen may be a bit challenging to use with one hand and reaching uh, its corners. It may not be as easy as an Oppo Find N2, however, due to the slightly curved screen and the raw design of the middle frame, lacking harsh corners like the iPhone, it feels quite nice. It's suitable for daily tasks such as browsing TikTok or Twitter. One thing worth mentioning though is the placement of the on-screen fingerprint scanner. It's positioned quite low and it can feel awkward to operate. If you compare it to the one on the Oppo Find X6 Pro, you'll find the latter is much more convenient. Fortunately, the Mate 60 Pro features a 3D depth sensor on the front, similar to the iPhone, which makes Tasks like WeChat Pay, Alipay, and recently added face recognition payments much easier. As I mentioned earlier, the three dots on the front are truly unique and sometimes remind me of Chinese monks. However, you can always choose to have the camera cut out in the settings. Anyway, you are probably curious about how this front screen looks. Well, the 1.5K screen looks fantastic and the colors are comfortable even when viewed from different angles we didn't notice any color deviation or similar issues and the peak brightness is sufficient to keep everything clear even under direct sunlight now let's dive into harmony os the fourth generation offers exceptional smooth os animations the level of smoothness is truly impressive just take a look at how the app opens and closes the animations are simply gorgeous right it is arguably the smoothest OS I've ever had the pleasure of using, making it absolute joy to navigate. With the return of the Korean chipset featuring its self-developed IP, it introduces some exciting features. For instance, there is the interactive always on display, where the animation, like that charming chicken, this chicken, follows your head's movement. Additionally, when you place your phone nearby, the screen lights up when you glance at it and turns off a few seconds later. Moreover, if the screen is unlocked and you are still looking at it, it remains illuminated. One standard feature that I've grown to appreciate is the air gestures. You can scroll up or down on the screen without even touching it. Initially, I thought it might be more of a gimmick than practical, but it's surprisingly responsive and incredibly useful. For instance, when my hands are occupied while eating, I can effortlessly browse content on the phone. You can even use it for a quick grab shot to crop a picture. Convenience at its finest. Another noteworthy feature is the AI privacy protection. When you are using your phone, I've seen the notifications as usual, allowing you to view the full message. However, if someone unfamiliar approaches the phone, the message content is automatically hidden. This adds an extra layer of security and privacy. 
This intelligent sensing feature is truly remarkable and enhances the overall user experience. Now, let's talk about the hardware performance and specifically with this phone encounters thermal issues easily. If you are interested in a deep dive into the Korean 9000S chipset, I highly recommend checking out Geek One's video. It's covering the most detailed and professional review of this chipset. Though it's in Chinese, you can use YouTube's auto translate function to get English subtitles. Be aware that the video does use technical jargon and may require a solid understanding of chipsets to afford a grasp. To summarize the key points from the video, the CPU energy efficiency of the Korean 9000 S is slightly better than the Snapdragon 888, and the GPU energy efficiency is on par with the Snapdragon 888. Now, let's address the thermal issues. We all know that the Snapdragon 888 chipset has had its fair share of thermal problems, right? However, the Korean 9000S offering performance comparable to the Snapdragon 888 is quite impressive. You can see the issues faced by Google's Tensor and Samsung's Exynos, for instance. So the main concern is how the Korean 9000S handles thermal issues. In normal daily use, such as browsing Twitter, watching TikToks, and taking photos, it performs well without any issues. However, I did encounter one problem after extending the camera use, particularly when shooting 4K video for hours. And in such cases, I noticed frame loss issues, like the one when comparing it with Oppo Find X6 Pro. A part examination in Premiere, I found that the Huawei footage had lost 13 frames, resulting in stuttering during a video playback. Well, I'm not a hardcore gamer, I do try a few games and I found that in some, it managed to deliver the full frame rate, like 120 FPS in a Glory of the King without any overheat issues. I also played PUBG for uh, half an hour and didn't experience overheating problems, pretty much like a typical flagship device. Additionally, I observed that the heat was evenly distributed uh, on the back of the phone. Unlike some other phones I've tested that concentrate heat in one area, it's important to note that this is a newly released chipset and phone, and there are plenty of time for gaming manufacturers and Huawei to optimize performance. I believe it will only improve as time goes on. In the process of preparing this video for the Mate 60 Pro, many people have been asking about its satellite communications feature. Unfortunately, this feature is only available on devices shipped in the Chinese mainland and it's only available in the Chinese mainland, <laughs> all right? So there's no way for users to use outside of China. I'm sorry about that. But if you do want to find out the core quality of this satellite communications, here are some I found on the internet. Check it out. Judging from this test, it's clear that the core quality is quite good. It connects swiftly and doesn't fall short when compared to professional, expensive, and bulky satellite communication equipment. If you are an auto enthusiast and you ever happens to support satellite communications with this phone, it is definitely something worth considering. Regarding the camera performance, to be completely honest, I probably shouldn't have invested so much time and effort in comparing this phone. The Mi 60 series was released in rush without advance notice or marketing, and the official launch event is scheduled for about a week from now. So it's possible that Huawei hasn't fully optimized everything yet, including camera hardware adaption, color tuning, However, I have to say that even in its current state, it doesn't fall short of existing flagship phones in terms of overall camera performance, whether we're talking about video quality, stabilization, or photos. For more detailed comparisons, you can check out some of the comparisons I've done before. Now, let's discuss what I like about the camera. The microphone on the Huawei Mate 60 Pro is exceptional. It delivers incredible clear audio, effectively reducing wind and environmental noise, surpassing many others in this respect. But, you know, the, the uh, Mate 60 Pro, 
up to 4K 60 FPS. So I'd like to compare that. But first, let's 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 just compare this. So right now, I'm. Uh, <laughs> I hope it's the Archer State Pro. Here, the see the difference. The super micro feature is probably the best, allowing me to get extremely close to the subject for highly detailed micro shots. On the flip side, there are a couple of things I don't particularly like. First, the slow motion mode. I've noticed some color deviation in certain scenarios. For example, I tried it several times and my hand appeared way too red. Another issue, as I mentioned earlier, is the frame loss problem that can occur after extended use of the camera, along with the phone feeling a bit of warm. However, I wouldn't be overly concerned about this. Historically, Huawei's Mate series has had better camera performance with the Korean chips compared to Snapdragon chips. Camera performance is, after all, one of the highlights of the Huawei Mate series. So let's give it some time to see if Huawei can address these uh, concerns. I will definitely follow up on uh, this issue. So please do subscribe for future updates. The Huawei Mate 60 proposes a substantial 5,000 million battery and it supports rapid charging with 88 watts wide, 50 watts wireless, and 20 watts reverse charging. Well, I didn't conduct a specific battery endurance test. My daily usage, which includes taking photos, occasional web browsing, and the general smartphone activities, easily lasted me an entire day. However, I did put the charging speed to test using the original charger. It took just, uh, okay, 100, so 40 minutes, okay? So 40 minutes from one to 100%. Now let's talk about the audio performance. Let me know if you like the sound. In conclusion, the surprise release of the Huawei Mate 60 series has garnered tremendous attention worldwide, and perhaps even Huawei didn't anticipate this level of response. Huawei's objective is straightforward. They aim to regain the market share they've lost over the past three years, and the Mate 60 series marks their first step in that direction. Undoubtedly, Huawei has made a significant impact. I've spent a lot of time at Huawei stores recently, and I've consistently seen fans come in eagerly inquiring about when they can purchase this uh, Mate 60 you know, series of phones. Some have even traveled from places like Singapore expressing their willingness to pay more to secure a phone in advance. Unfortunately, the response has always been the same. Sorry, you have to wait at least a month. It's been a while since the phone has generated such worldwide excitement. Everyone loves the story of an underdog making a comeback. And for many users, this phone carries more symbolic meaning than just being a device. However, putting aside all the emotions, this is undeniably a competitive flagship that many people are considering purchasing. It does have its issues, and it's not at its absolute best at the moment. There's room for improvements in terms of software usability, addressing thermal issues, and optimizing gaming performance. But compared to Apple's many updates each year, the Mate 60 Pro is clearly a more interesting option. It introduces satellite communication, an incredibly smooth harmony OS, fun gesture controls, and a great photography experience. All of which make using the phone much more enjoyable. 
That wraps up this video. I hope it has answered some of your questions about the phone. This video was a labor of love. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. I want to extend a special thanks to Gistab for uh, lending me this phone. Thanks for watching. I'm Sammy. I will see you next one. Bye-bye.